Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Golden Moments. I'm Bruce Howard, and any time you have a new Hall of Fame class, it is clearly a golden moment. And the class of 2022 had one team, the 1971 baseball team, and then five individuals, and those individuals are the subject of this golden moment. Chris O'Hare, University of Tulsa Track, Michelle Sexer from rowing, Ryan Poor from soccer, Jeb Blunt from football in the 1970s, and then legendary head coach Tubby Smith of TU basketball. Let's take a look back at this class of 2022 in the individual side. Our first individual inductee into the University of Tulsa Athletic Hall of Fame is cross country and track star Chris O'Hare, TU's first track and field national champion when he won the mile run at the 2012 NCAA Division I Indoor Championships. Chris O'Hare probably was one of the best competitors I ever saw on the track, or on a cross country course wearing the University of Tulsa jersey. I think Chris O'Hare is gonna go down as arguably the greatest runner in Tulsa history. You know, I think that that history has continued to build and, and grow over the years, and we now have three individual national champions. In the 2011 NCAA Indoor Championships, O'Hare was nipped at the wire and finished in second place. What defines Chris is as much as Chris loved to win, he probably hated to lose more so. And I would think any other athlete in their first trip to the national championship would be absolutely ecstatic and over the moon finishing second. And I still remember talking to Chris afterwards and listening to his interview and he was upset. Uh, kind of disappointed right now. I uh, uh, came into the race, I was like, I guess I could win this. I'd give it my all, but I, and I, I did give it my all. It just wasn't, just wasn't enough today. A year later, with all the attention on the defending champion from BYU, Chris O'Hare was ready again. Yeah, the plan definitely wasn't to take it from the gun. But the race was nearly a carbon copy of the year before, with O'Hare having the lead for most of the run. For, I think it was eight laps, Chris led for eight laps. And down the backstretch this time, Chris O'Hare held everybody off and won TU's first national title. And being overlooked was just fine. A little bit sweeter when nobody expects you to do it. Really, it hasn't really sunk in yet. Stepped up, nobody helped him this time. He had to lead entirely by himself. And to win it was just amazing. For Chris O'Hare, after winning a national title, it's on to the next thing. We'll try, we'll be trying our best. Um, uh, for conference and nationals, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be gunning for it. O'Hare became a six-time All-American and 14-time All-Conference selection, winning 11 league championship events, was two-time league track athlete of the year, and helped lead TU to three cross-country and one indoor team championship. He never lost a race wearing a Tulsa jersey at a conference level championship, but one time. That means 15 to 16 times he put on that jersey, he was number one. That's amazing. O'Hare also stepped up his game internationally, like in the Melrose games against the Collegians and the pros. Very happy milers there in one of the deepest indoor mile fields ever. Fabulous running there, a collegiate record by Chris O'Hare of Tulsa in fourth place. With a largely individual sport, O'Hare was also a fabulous teammate. I, I think he was a great competitor, but I think also he was a great leader. When, when Chris was fired up, he had the rest of the team fired up. And I think his emotions, we all fed off Chris's emotions. In my time, I don't know if I've seen a better leader on or off the track than Chris O'Hare. Chris O'Hare took Tulsa on his shoulders and put him on the mat. Our next TU Hall of Fame inductee is Michelle Sexer from rowing. From 2004 to 2008, Michelle helped the rising tide of University of Tulsa rowing. Michelle was and is just the most incredible athlete and competitor um, when it comes to going after a goal. Michelle is the fiercest competitor I have ever coached. And, you know, I, I have been I have been blessed to coach a lot of fierce competitors and a lot of great athletes, uh, but Michelle was that person who was going to make the boat faster no matter what. In making the TU boats go faster, Michelle was a three-time CRCA National Scholar Athlete along with first team all region. She also helped TU win the Midwest Collegiate Championship twice. What I saw in her is just the heart of a lion. I mean, she is, First of all, she is incredibly intelligent, right? So she fit the university so well in that way. 
but that intelligence also, you know, it, 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 it allows her to bring to the forefront a heart that's just of gold. As terms of a person, just the biggest heart um, out there, like empathetic, uh, encouraging, motivating, inspiring, um, relentless. You know, she really loved being at the University of Tulsa and she really loved the people who were there and she loved to compete wearing that Tulsa on her shirt. While mostly in the eights and fours, she did get some competition in some rowing pairs. Yeah, you know, I, I'm glad you brought up that pair because I did have a great um, partner. Her name was Angie rosowski Boat, and we actually went to high school together out in Folsom, California. We rode together and we both signed on at Tulsa and it was great to have, you know, the varsity at Tulsa was fantastic. We had a great varsity four, but um, racing the two-person boat, the pair with Angie, was a really fun experience. There's just a lot more accountability required. After her career at TU, she immediately started competing in world rowing events, mostly in singles and pairs. As she told us via Zoom call this past summer, even while training, she was already using her TU degree. Yeah, well, I am currently, um, I'm also working. I work as the director of operations for a company called the Digital Medicine Society. And we are working towards, um, especially a lot of issues that COVID brought to light, a lot of telehealth, a better need for digital endpoints, remote patient monitoring. The degree at Tulsa really has paid off in helping me get positions like that. What she was training for was the Olympic Games as she and her partner represented the U.S. in the lightweight double skulls. They finished in fifth place at Tokyo, a razor thin half second from a bronze and one second from gold. What a journey for Michelle Sexer, from California to TU to the Olympics, and now into the Golden Hurricane Hall of Fame. Our next TU Hall of Fame inductee is Ryan Poor from Men's Soccer. Poor is the only two-time All-American in soccer for TU and is number two on the all-time point and goal scoring list in only three seasons. Uh, Ryan Poor was um, an explosive player. Um, I think very direct in his approach in terms of uh, when he picked up a ball, uh, he headed straight to goal. Um, he was a player that you know was an excellent finisher um, in and around the box. Man, Ryan Poor, what made him such a great player? I think was the fact that he was an ultimate competitor. Um, I think whenever I think about him, the talent was undeniable. Everyone knew that. I think his. His competition standard is something that will be something that all of us remember. Ryan Poor not only scored lots of goals, but lots of big goals in crucial moments. First as a freshman at number one Stanford, TU down one nothing when Poor tied the game. Maybe a ball that bounced out to the top of the box, I was able to cut, cut one back, got the defender kind of flying by me and uh, again was able to score it. Uh, then later in the second half. I remember Scotty Kincaid, our left back at the time, get a ball. Um, and, and just kind of made a run through. He played a great ball through and a uh, goalkeeper came out and was able to slide it by him. That goal gave TU the lead in a history-making win over number one. A year later, as a sophomore in postseason. NCAA tournament game at, at home against Oakland, he scored a goal in the last oh, 10 seconds, I think 20 seconds to send it into overtime where we eventually won. So, you know, he just, he could find a way to score in those, in those big moments. The next year, TU made the round of 16 in the NCAA tournament against number two SMU. Poor tied the game at one on a penalty kick, and then he strikes again with what would turn out to be the final goal of his career. It's overtime, and, and we get the foul called the edge of the box, um, left side, left side of the D. And um, my assistant coach at the time was Colin Clark, and, uh, <laughs> and Colin and I were sitting on the bench, and. You know, we look at one another and we're like, yeah, this is this is going in. We were in overtime and, and we got a set piece at the top of the box and I think everyone kind of just thought maybe this was the moment. But the best part was the assistant coach or one of the coaches from SMU looks over to Colin and Colin gives him one of these like, this is going in. And Ryan stepped up and, and hit the, the set piece and bent it right in the top right corner. It, I can see it like it was yesterday. And, and sure enough, it went in and, and uh, yeah, we won the game on, on a golden goal in overtime. I'll never forget it. He, he kind of took off celebrating down the track in front of the bench. Um, and we all kind of looked at each other like we wanted to go celebrate because the game was over and we were going to the Elite Eight, but none of us could catch him. 
After TU lost in the Elite Eight, Ryan was Soccer America's National Player of the Year and a finalist for the Herman Trophy. Poor went pro, drafted by Kansas City in the MLS draft as the number 16 overall pick. Yeah, you can talk about all those other attributes, his pace, his finishing ability, his this, his that, but um, he, was, he was the ultimate competitor and, and uh, he could make others around him better. Our next TU Hall of Fame inductee is football quarterback Jeb Blunt. He quarterbacked Tulsa's 1974 and 75 Missouri Valley Conference Championship teams while earning AP Honorable Mention All-American Merit both seasons. Jeb was uh, like, a, like a light bulb. Lit us all up, uh, both with his uh, flair, his personality, uh, the way he played. Jeb Blunt, classic passer. Fine young man. Jeb was a perfect college athlete, meaning if I were recruiting for a college, he would be the type of guy that I'd like to have in my recruiting class. When number one was an exceptional young man. You could really tell, you know, tell his leadership qualities very early on. Jeb had a big personality, and uh, I mean, you, it was obvious he was from Texas. Uh, he was very proud of being from Texas, but uh, I mean, he, he just he was a guy that. Uh, you just gravitated towards. My first encounter, Jeb, uh, because he lived in uh, the Fortune Hall with us, and walking into that suite, I guess Jeb had already moved in a few hours earlier than I did, and he's out in the middle of the suite with his guitar playing the Wabash Cannonball. I'll never forget, that was my first introduction to TU football and to Jeb Blunt. Jeb Blunt then proceeded to strum opposing defenses. Even in his first year on the TU freshman team, Tulsa was playing at OU, trailing 30 to six, and Blunt started the second half. We got in the second half, and in the second play of the game, or the second half, able to, to uh, locate a fellow named Steve Largent. I remember Jeb coming in the second half, and boy, he just really lit up the scoreboard. And uh, I threw a couple passes to me. I caught, I don't know, five or six passes. I had a touchdown or two. And watching those two put on a display that I still recall even today, some of the catches, some of the throws made and the catches, uh, long catches made. Steve and Jeb in the second half connected for about four TDs and we made a great comeback and fell just a field goal short. We put Jeb in in the second half and we ended up tying them 30 to 30 and they kicked the field goal with a few seconds or a few minutes to go in the game to win 33 to 30. So that was my introduction to Jeb Blunt and I, I said, this guy is the future. That Blunt to Largent combo translated to the varsity as Jeb hit Largent and the other TU receivers to the tune of over 4,300 yards in his passing career. He was two-time league first team pick and offensive player of the year in the MVC in 1974. What made him so effective? Had a great arm and 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 probably uh, one of the best touch passers, you know, in TU history. He always reminded me of Sammy Ball. I thought he looked like Sammy Ball. <laughs> I thought he threw the football like Sammy Ball, and uh, he could sling it right. If you went and, and drew a passer for a pro offense, he were he would be it. Six foot three, two hundred pounds great overhand delivery. After that stellar TU career, Jeb was drafted in the second round by the Oakland Raiders and was on a Super Bowl winning team after the 1976 season. He would then continue his NFL career, going on to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jeb Blunt joins a host of TU football players from that mid-1970s era into the TU Hall of Fame. Our final Hall of Fame inductee is Orlando Tubby Smith, head men's basketball coach from 1991 to 1995. From the time he was introduced to the Tulsa community, Tubby made an impact. For Tulsa at that time, uh, for us and what we needed, he was absolutely the right man, right fit, right time. Coach Smith is the type of coach that you would want your son or your daughter or to play for. He's the kind of coach that, you know, it was, Obviously, he's a heck of a basketball coach, but he's a better person. This was the right person. This is what we needed in Tulsa. This is someone that would resonate and connect, which is so important, always has been for us here. So Tubby went to work, recruiting, hitting the community, and then, of course, practice and preparation for the season. It started in the conditioning when we started running, and we thought, are we on the track team or are we on the basketball team? So then when the first practice started, 
we were like, this guy, is, we can't do this every day, can we? I mean, it was nuts. We were, it was like boot camp. It was very physical, and we were setting a tone that you had to earn that time on the court, and Tubby was setting a tone of toughness. His teams were going to be tough. They were going to play tough. Coach Smith was not afraid to expend a little of his own energy. Anybody that saw him coach and saw the energy, I mean, the, at the end of any TU game, Tubby was as exhausted and drenched as any player we had. So the high energy, the conditioning, and the hard work paid off. By year three, TU was ready to make a move. First, a Missouri Valley Conference regular season title and NCAA bid. Then, it was the historic win over number 17 UCLA and then the second round victory over number 19 Oklahoma State for TU's first ever Sweet 16. A year later, another NCAA berth, a come from behind win over Illinois in the first round and a second straight Sweet 16 with a win over Old Dominion. Through all the toughness and tenacity, the one thing you always knew about Coach Smith is that he gave his players freedom, and he listened to them. Like right after Lou Dawkins' historic shot when TU needed to burn off the last 1.4 seconds to end the game. Everyone was nervous. Coach Tubby was nervous, and they were trying to draw up this beautiful play for us to get the inbound, get the pass inbound. I was like, Coach, let's just throw the ball into the court, man, and call it a day. We out of there. He's like, yeah, Lou, you're right, <laughs> you know. But it was a great moment, man. It was uh, the freedom to be basketball players, and he truly believed in that and instilled that in us. And on top of that, he made us believe in ourselves. He gave me the freedom, you know. He pushed me to, to, to not only just shoot threes, but, you know, attack the basket, you know, make your teammates better, do all the, the little things to, just to help your team win. The freedom was there, except for when I tried to shoot a three. Uh, when I turned around after I missed the shot, they were already at the scores table to sub me out. Tubby would lead Kentucky to a national championship, but here in Tulsa, he'll always be known for being a two-time league coach of the year and leading TU to two MVC titles, two NCAA tournaments, and two Sweet 16s.